I'm LaTanya Jr. I'm your host of TCB360 Smart Business Network. As you know, TCB360.com is today is January 1. And yes, I'm working because I'm excited and I have a wonderful show to share with you. And another great special series. And I know they're all sort of great, but I want to hit home with this one. This is all about the Walmart and whether you think it's relevant or familiar, it's big time. It's big time. And I'm working off of new energy and I want everyone else to think about new energy. You know, we get older every year and every year we're supposed to get better. Supposed to. <laughs> Life is good and we're going to share that and show that. And hopefully you'll feel that throughout this entire show. We're still, of course, working up to our January 9 day, which is our new series where you'll see some new logos, some color changes, some music. That's another story. Sit back, grab your pen, your paper, your pencil. I'm saying it in all one breathing and check me out while I record the show for those listeners around the world that are listening on radio. Ears are going on. If you're new to the show, I'm going to do the intro. You can't hear it, but you'll hear it on the radio station. How about that? The night's going to be a real good night. Okay, here we go. Welcome, welcome. TCB 360 2011. It's not over. Life is still about learning. I'm your host, LaTanya Jr. Leaders are learners. Learners are lear leaders. And I'm feeling good. Grab your pen your pencil. It's time to learn. <laughs> I know this like new intro music. And I thought, should I use it? Cause it's really upbeat. And I know most of you have been partnering, part, partnering, part, part, partnering. Okay. Can I, can't, I can't even say it. You've been potting all night long and it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean the planet stops. It doesn't mean you stop learning, but I think I have a great story to jumpstart your new years your new year and I and it jump started mine and I don't know if you guys have checked out the Oprah network here in the US I don't know where it is or is it anywhere else globally but it is quite extraordinary and it gave me a extra wind of air and I decided to grab a few things and learn myself you know I believe in lifetime learners and I hope that you do also and today's show all in one breath <laughs> talking about a lifetime learner here's a segue this guy here, and even though he recently, um, why was he, he passed about maybe 15, 20 years ago, his legacy stays on, his family wealth continues, they're still doing outstanding things. We spoke of this person a few weeks ago when we talked about horizontal business, and maybe a year ago, I know that's a long time, but our listeners are loyal, I should say devoted, that's my new word, devoted. Um, what they've been doing uh, not just now, but the past, is that this particular company we're talking about, they keep inventing things through the learning process. I know that has to feel familiar. Sometimes we get overwhelmed with the clutter of what we have to do as entrepreneurs. But the aha in it all, you know, the big wow is, am I learning through the process of innovation or through the process of growth? And the fact that they have strategically put learning into their over overall paradox of their business is profound. And that's why we're going to talk about Walmart. I, I know Walmart is not a, a it's not an entertainment business. No, it's not a elite shoe company and it's not whole, you know, it's not organic food, but it is Walmart people. <laughs> and my goodness, is it a juicy story? It is. Yeah. So come on, come on with me. Don't turn away. Trust and believe you'll need this information. You'll find yourself somewhere in it. And just as so many other people that have used this particular Walmart model, because he's actually, he's created a really slick, simple model uh, that we can integrate some of it into our day-to-day -day business. First and foremost, Walmart, its owner was named Sam. 
nice, simple, and sweet Sam. And Sam had an interesting thought process. His thing was, let me tell you what his thing was. He would, on weekends, take a pad and a pencil and go around to all of his competitors' stores. He would get in the shopping lines and talk to people and actually <laughs> steal some of the best employees. Or I would say, I wouldn't say copy. I would just say learn and duplicate because you can never copy anything exactly. And that was never the intention. The deal was is that he wanted to stay in the learning process even when his office closed. But it was not an easy journey. It never really is, even though it looks like it. It was a, it was a rocky road in the beginning. And here's how it all starts out. He's a young guy. Before he's named the richest guy in the world in the 1980s, he's a young guy and he's 17 years old. He worked for a chain of franchise stores um, by the name of Benjamin Franklin. And I have to tell you, this family, what I know about this family, Benjamin Franklin, through some other research, is that they started the first pretty much discount stores, chain stores in the United States. It was a group of brothers from Massachusetts, Boston, and they started in the late 1800s and they set it up where you could actually purchase an individual franchise, so one at a time. They didn't package it like a lot of companies do today. And that's a big thought. So here's this Sam Walton. Now, just let's sit back. Now, you can imagine quite a few things back in the early 20s were very inexpensive anyway. So to negotiate something down to a dime, a nickel, nickel or a penny is quite profound when you could get a loaf of bread for a nickel, correct? <laughs> What, you know, how ahead of their times were they? And, and so many people still complain about, hey, the franchise nickel and dime stores, the discount stores are going to take business from the smaller stores because they can't compete. But I have to tell you, whenever those discount stores come into the community, the smart things for those unique small business stores is to come become specialty stores, more like boutiques. There is a need for boutiques in the market, and then there is a need for for large stores. And I'll, and I'll share that need as we go on. But if you're listening and if you're a small business owner, store owner, the big franchise are coming into your town, don't give up. It's, a time, it's time to get smart and innovate. Sell what they can't sell at the quality they can't sell at. A little different story, but I just wanted to make sure I share that. So let's continue here. So this so Sam Walton is about 17 years old, and he was a systems thinker. Now, I'm a system thinker, so I get this. Some of you are, some of you aren't. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. We're all different, and we're a part of the big puzzle. We just need to know what piece of the puzzle we fit best, okay? So this, this store called Benjamin Franklin franchise, he purchased it on an advice of a friend. That's a very good friend. And what they did was, while working at Benjamin Franklin, this is where I think it gets real good. 17, he figures, I got to learn the ropes somewhere. It didn't say he went off to Harvard or Oxford and learn how to, do, to handle distribution. No, there's nothing wrong with that journey. But this young man said, I want to learn about stores and about systems in general. And I'm going to get my practice with this store called Benjamin Franklin. Okay, and at the time, fast, fast growing store, and there was fast ways to doing things. And if you have that brain, see, see, this is how it plays out. If you have a brain like a mechanic, a mechanic is always trying to figure out how to create the shortest, effective, transformational distance from point A to point B. Some of us just think that way. Some of you don't like the details and you're a big picture people and that works for you. There's nothing wrong with it. The deal is though, if you're in a business or if you work in an industry where system thinking is critical to the success of the business, I really encourage you to collaborate with a system thinker or bring a board or consult with a system thinker to close the gaps because they close all of those little tiny things that create that shortest distance to your success. I know 
Tanya, you're always coming up with something, giving us something else to do. But what I'm sharing is a piece of crumb of the pie that says this really would nurture your business. When you just really get down to it and you say, I can only move so far. No, but we all need those counterparts. Where we are weak, we need someone strong. Okay? Just keep that in on that, keep that a part of your head. So let's keep going here. Now, this guy, Sam Walton, he's doing pretty well. He buys a property location, and guess what? He's actually forced out of his particular location. Yeah. And then he has to find a new location. You can imagine when you're pushed out of the location, people are familiar with purchasing your products or services. It, it's pretty much you're almost starting over, right? Unless you're standing in the same town and you're just on one side of the corner, but that wasn't really the case. So what he does in 1951, he sets up Walton 5. He starts, he says, listen, I'm going to get a new location. I'm going to start a dime store in Bentonville, Arkansas, which if you guys, I know you're listening around the world, that is what Americans call the deep, dirty South. It's a very rural area of the South. And of course, in 1951, it was extremely deep. I share that because most people assume that if they're going to do big things in business, they have to do them in big, big cities. And that's really a, a 21st century thought even more so. When I speak to so many small businesses, you're constantly saying to me, I want to be in New York. I want to do something in California, Chicago, Dallas. Those are great cities. There is a unique expensive strategy that goes along with them to enter the market. And there are wonderful opportunities in quiet little towns 